Welcome to Digital Asset News, the top stories in cryptocurrency digital assets. Man, I'm breaking down to bite-sized pieces. Today, we've got one big story. And I didn't think it was that big when I first read it, but it read, led me down a rabbit hole that I just couldn't shake. So this starts off with Ripple's Growing House it says China leads U.S. in crypto regulatory outlook. And this one article sent me down this rabbit hole, which took me from every, everywhere from D chain nodes and rewards, Price Waterhouse Coopers, Tim Draper, Walmart, even the Telecommunications Act of 1996 and how it all relates to the internet. On top of that, it took me all the way to Alex Mashinsky and why blockchain is going to swallow up the entire internet. And finally, it led me to Donald Trump. So this one article just led me down, like I said, this huge rabbit hole and it had huge ramifications moving forward. Also, Cointelegraph figures out that there's scams on YouTube. Amazing. And that will lead us to Scam of the Day, which we'll go over after these two stories. But first, let's take a look at yesterday's video. So in yesterday's video, I introduced you to a product called Shield Folio or the Stone Book. And I just uh, at random picked out a winner and it was actually Jason Moore. And all I just said is, hey, if, you, if this something looks like something you want to actually have, uh, just give me a shout out in the comment section. And Jason did just that. He says, I want a Shield Folio. So a lot of you did. I really appreciate everybody who commented. So Jason is the winner. And of course, there were some happy people uh, that said, you know, hey, congratulations, whatever else. But uh, Speak Your Mind had my favorite quote where he says, lucky bastard, which is true. Jason's, uh, he got lucky and he won that, uh, that stone book. So congratulations. If you haven't seen the stone book, uh, it's pretty cool. It's uh, essentially made out of stone. Uh, it has uh, these paper or this paper uh, that is really resistant to a lot of different things such as uh, you know tearing uh, tearing it apart because I've even tried uh, even like when you rub your hand over it it doesn't really do too much or actually anything at all and it's water resistant it's not fire resistant because I actually uh, took a took a page and was able to burn it but I mean for all the things that we've done uh, to like hold on to our seed phrases all the things that we have for our cryptocurrency wallets, this thing is pretty cool. And it also has this thing called a ghost pen, which allows you to write invisible, and then you just kind of, you know, shine that thing over it. So it's pretty cool. So uh, this product, I didn't know this thing actually existed. Uh, the owner just reached out to me and said, "Hey, can I get, do a giveaway?" And then, uh, you know, here we are. So there was a lot of uh, uh, requests for more information. I don't really have too much uh, on it. I mean, it's pretty, you know, self-explanatory. But I think I want a lot of people actually want to have this. So I reached out to uh, Freddie Hernandez. Hernandez, he's the CEO, and I said, look, Freddie, uh, there's a lot of uh, requests for this book. Can I get a discount co code for all these people? Uh, it's not an affiliate code. Uh, I don't get anything for it, but he said, yeah, just take this code, and uh, I'm going to link this in the description of this video. And uh, when you click on that, it'll take you to the actual website. It looks something like this, and you can, uh, let's see, where is it? Our story, let's go down here, add to cart. So it was 50 it's on sale for 35 and then with that discount code, it takes down like 29 bucks. So uh, not too bad. So if you're into that, you know, go ahead and uh, check it out. I'll link in the description. But let's move on to today's top stuff. So first up, what's going on with the market? It is Sunday, July 19th, and not much is going on. Bitcoin's Bitcoin, uh, just hanging around 9,100. Ethereum 234, that's kind of depressing. I was kind of hoping it would actually go up to, you know, above, you know, the 244 mark, but here we are. Tether's Tether, XRP is XRP. Bitcoin Cash, what are you going to do? Cardano, hanging on to that sixth spot. Uh, look, it's like around 12 cents. Bitcoin SV, still in the top 10. No idea why. Chainlink, uh, looks like it's, uh, uh, you know, dropped a little bit. I mean, it had a magnificent run. I think it was like $8.56 or 64 cents, something like that. So now it's a, it's a reasonable 787. So uh, Chainlink uh, had a little dip. What are you going to do? Litecoin, Binance Coin, so on and so forth. Nothing really fantastic. Even the Darling, which was VeChain, even took a little bit of a hit down 2.5%. Uh, so uh, Sundays are kind of like always like this. And then leading into Mondays, you know, off we go. So we'll see. Anyhow, let's uh, break into this this article. We've got a lot of things to go over. So first up, Ripple's Growing House says China leads U.S. in crypto regulatory outlook. So what's going on here? So there was a uh, Chamber of Digital Commerce uh, Parallel Summit on July 17th. This was Friday. I actually went to their website just to see what was going on. And, you know, it has all these different speakers and it's already passed. Uh, but you can sign up and I think they're going to do a replay of all the different people that were actually there and were um, uh, actually on stage. So... 
I'll follow up and see what I can get. Uh, but it looks pretty interesting about what actually happened. But let's break into the actual article so we can get... Ah, look at eToro. I got to tell you, eToro, not my favorite. A lot of problems with them. Anyhow, so the article goes on. Where it states, Garling House expressed admiration for China's approach to the crypto space. And he says he's pretty much in awe of what's going on. So he said, I think they, being China... They're realizing that some of these technologies may, in fact, be very foundational for the future of how financial systems work, and they want to make sure that they have capabilities at the heart of them. So the question gets asked, well, if you have regulation and you have the government laying forth and saying, okay, this is a security, okay, this is a commodity, and they pretty much you know, separate it, does regulation give entities like institutional investors confidence? So the rationale that, that uh, Brad gave, Brad Garlinghouse gave, uh, when he mentioned Bitcoin and Ethereum, regulatory classification as an example. U.S. regulating bodies came forward in 2018 and 2019, and they classified Bitcoin and Ethereum not as securities, but as commodities. Such rulings now give companies and individuals more confidence in participation around those assets. And it makes total sense, right? As soon as these things things start to happen, uh, you would just see like you know institutions kind of slowly creeping in. They're like, oh, it's not a security, so it's going to be actually a commodity. There's no, we don't have to go through all these different hoops and everything else. Sure, we'll get into it, and that's why you see lies these different institutional investors getting into the fray because look, they're like, this is a commodity. I don't have to do all these different things to actually have it. So when I was thinking about this, I go, well, if you've got Ethereum and Bitcoin, those are the only two right now that the government has actually kind of gave the green light to for whatever reason so imagine this imagine if there was another coin uh, and it was classified as a commodity because right now no one really knows no one no one can really say you know what is a security what is a commodity as a matter of fact uh, x uh, ripples xrp is going through the regulation or the uh, process of trying to figure out is it a security is it a commodity if the courts ever come out and go you know what this is a commodity i mean it's going to be you know huge green day for everybody uh, now the opposite could happen i don't think it will uh, but if it does it could be uh you know pretty detrimental for ripple and xrp even my portfolio because i do hold xrp but let's go back let's say right now that the government comes out and goes you know what that v chain that's pretty good stuff uh just a commodity no big deal so if they listed VeChain as, as a commodity, first of all, you know, what is VeChain? What has it all got going for it? So this is from VeChain Insider. And if you don't know VeChain, um, there's been a lot of talk about it. And uh, I used to own it. And I can tell you right now, it looks pretty good. It's looking much better, actually, as time is going on. So there's two types of token. VeChain token or VET. Then there's the Thor. Uh, VeChain or VET is a store of value. Thor, you need that to interact with a blockchain. It's kind of, think of it like gas. That's essentially how I kind of look at it. Gas for... Uh, the blockchain process. There's two types of nodes. Authority nodes. Um, nodes are used to validate. The, the authority nodes are used to validate all blockchain transactions. There will only be 101 authority nodes. Uh, they need dedicated hardware and need a minimum of 25 million VET. That's a boatload. Economic nodes are not validating blockchain transaction but offer stability to the ecosystem you only need a million vet <laughs> only a million no hardware is required just place your vet into a traceable wallet and using the vchain throw a mobile wallet go to rewards and upgrade to a node great so here's where it gets interesting uh, about vchain because i was just thinking of i was just kind of you know thinking out loud going well, what if vchain was a commodity and i started to take a look at it a little bit deeper and then i just saw this i go hold on wait a second it says currently multiple companies for example dnvgl and PwC, PricewaterhouseCoopers, have come forward announcing that they are holding an authority node. And I was like, what? I didn't. I never heard about that. And this was like not anything like reason. This was in 2018. PricewaterhouseCoopers announced a joint business relationship with VeChain Global Technology Holding Limited. And I was like, okay. And then when I was searching for this, because I was searching for PricewaterhouseCoopers and VeChain, then this little thing came up where the, where the VeChain Foundation on Twitter made it public. They say, hey, we see eye to eye with our investor, Tim Draper, regarding the future of cryptocurrencies and use of blockchain solutions. So I'm like, okay, Tim Draper's, uh, if you don't know him, he's the uh, he's kind of like one of those uh, clairvoyant people who are able to see a lot of things out in the future. Now, has he picked 100% winners? No, nobody does. That's impossible. But he's had some pretty good runs, such as Skype, Overture, Baidu, Tesla. That wasn't a bad one. Hotmail, Twitch TV, and he also found VeChain. So uh, when we're looking at these type of thing, like I am always looking at what is smart money doing? What are they investing into? Because I don't run in these circles. I just don't. Uh, I don't know if you do. And if you do, 
you know, that'd be great because uh, then you can give me some more information. But uh, uh, when I'm trying to figure out what is the next big thing, I kind of try to look at where is the smart money going? Not what they're saying they're doing, but what they're actually doing. So if I can see Tim Draper in here, I'm like, okay, maybe this could be something very big. So we got that. On top of that, this has also been a news. Walmart China subsidiary teams up with VeChain to trace food products. So looking pretty darn good. So anyhow, so when I was just going down this little rabbit hole, I was just thinking to myself, you know, what if it wasn't just Bitcoin and Ethereum and they were classified as commodities? What if you could have something like a V-chain, like a Cardano, like a tomato coin or whatever else it is? How much would that coin go up when that actually happened and when the U.S. government actually got off their tail and did the thing that they're supposed to be paid to do, which is set forth regulation? Because at some point, we're going to need these types of things and actions to actually happen to move forward. And if we don't, U.S. keeps falling behind. And it seems like the world is kind of... there's. I used to think that the world will kind of sit around and wait for America, but that's not how it's working. They're kind of, they're just going to go ahead without us, and that's just how it goes. Uh, technology moves pretty quickly. There is no reason that America has to set the tone for everything. So, I mean, that's why China is moving forward. That's why Europe is moving forward. That's why Africa is moving forward. That's why Australia is moving forward, and everything else is moving forward, except for America, because the problem is they can't get regulation right. They can't get it done in time. And people are just going, you know what? If you can't do these things, we'll move to another country and we'll do things outside. And that's what's going to happen. I can tell you when America did do the right thing, which was for the internet, you know, decades ago. We'll get into that in just a second. So moving forward, Brad Garlinghouse said, today, because of the mining control of Bitcoin and Ether in China, these are technologies controlled by China. And look, if you're a miner out there, you're probably screaming at the screen going, that's not true because we're a mining pool and we can go to anyone we want to. And yes, I understand that. If you're in the mining pool, you can go to a Bitmain. Uh, you can go to some other different mining pool outside of China. And that's fine. The thing is, though, and, I, and I've talked to different miners out there, it seems like these mining pools that are centralized in China uh, give the cheapest rates because they get the cheapest electricity right now. So why would you go anyplace else if they give you the cheapest rates for all the cheapest things you can and you can keep your costs low? I don't understand that part. So if uh, someone knows some I don't, please put it in the comment section. But uh, there's no reason if, um, you know, unless you're, you know, nationalist and go, you know what, I'm just not going to work with China because I, I, you know, do not believe in that. And that's that, then sure. But I think a lot of people are in this and just for the money and they're looking at themselves and going, you know what, uh, that province in China or that different uh, mining pool uh, gives us the lowest rates for electricity. I'm going to go with that. And uh, that is also a problem. Now, hopefully uh, things from like layer one, which is located in West Texas, can get their act together and they can actually start to uh, produce what they're supposed to do, which is um, electricity for less than a penny for a kilowatt hour. We'll see that actually uh, comes about. Moving forward, Garlinghouse said 25 years ago, the U.S. was a leader in making the Internet what it is today. But part of that came from regulatory clarity, he added. And I never really realized that because I was around when the Internet came about. And I remember just it just kind of happened because I was a younger kid and I didn't really know what's going on. But now that I'm able to a little bit older and I can look back and I'm, I'm thinking to myself, what is Brad talking about here? What is he saying that the U.S. did back then as opposed to what they are not doing now? So I had to take a look. And this was a article titled A Brief, Brief History of Internet Regulation. I will not bore you with all the stuff because it's very long. Let's just go over one thing, which is the Telecommunications Act 96. The Clinton administration, remember that guy? He brought with it a very specific view, or the administration brought with it a very specific view of the future of telecommunications. It saw the potential for an explosion in information services and believed strongly that relying on private investment and markets would be the best route to promoting innovation, raising investment capital, and managing the uncertainties about the shape these future services would take. So if you take a step back and you look at what the internet was and what it could potentially be, this part of the government got it right. And they say, you know what? We have to step back because it's a huge innovation. There's going to be a massive amount of things that are come forward. So we don't want to hinder this. We want to get out of the way of it and just let it actually happen. The pro this is a great idea, right? So the problem here with government 
it's not that, that 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 government right now has actually stepped in and said, no, we don't want you to do this or this or that. The problem is of inaction. And when you have inaction, you have uncertainty. And when you have uncertainty, you have different problems with the market and things just don't know where they can go. And then it just kind of flounders. And I think that's what's happening. So uh, before, this was actually a good thing uh, because they actually took action and did the right, uh, you know, the right process. And that's the problem. So let's move on. It applied this perspective widely. For example, it argued in international fora that the internet did not belong in the province of the International Telecommunications Union, since it was different than standard telephony. It made sure that the governance structure of the internet remained in private hands, those the user, rather than being moved to government decision makers. It took steps to facilitate internet commercialization, but the most important manifestations of the Clinton administration was the Telecommunications Act 96. The 96 was the watershed event that marked the end of the telephone age. This is a key to remember this. The end of the telephone age and the beginning of the internet age in the public policy realm. Today, we regard the convergence of telephones, television, and the internet as a fact of life. In 96, when I was around, it was considered a futuristic proposition. Let me tell you, when the internet came out, we're like, what the heck? No one had an idea what, what, what it was going to do, what it was going to be. Uh, we thought, actually, and I swear, we thought the government would control it because we were thinking to ourselves, no one's going to let that much information out. No one's going to allow this to actually happen. And of course, they actually did the right thing and said, you know what, we're going to do hands off. And then here we are. So uh, hopefully moving forward, we can get a little bit more clarity and we won't have all these problems, but we'll see. So back to the article, the ripple head talking about Garlinghouse said the same possibility for advancement currently exists around blockchain. Although the U.S. has not jumped on the opportunity, pointing instead to its focus on other technology like 5G. And that's the truth right now. I mean, we have a di bunch of different um, bills being brought forth to Congress this year. So hopefully uh, there's a lot of action. However, Congress is a big, massive waste of energy. Uh, they seem to not be able to get anything done. So I'm not holding my breath, but we'll see. So there's two things. One, let's look at smart money and see what they think is going on. And we're going to take a look at Tim Draper and Alex Mashinsky. And two, I want to take a look at the current government's view on Bitcoin, distributed ledger technology, and everything else that's going into this space. So first up, we got my man, Tim Draper. And he's going to talk about just how far in advance or just how early we actually are and what's going to happen. I think it's important to just take a step back and just realize everybody who here, you who are watching this video, you are super early. And some people say, no, you're not. You're like in the, in the later later games. That's ridiculous. You are super early this whole thing, right? You are at the very beginning of the internet, essentially. I know they say, well, it's been around 10 years. Nothing's really happened in 10 years. It's been a much of white paper. The 2017 parabolic bull run, you know what people were investing in? Paper, white paper, nothing, vaporware. It was absolutely zip. So when I talk about these types of things, like what these are, this is the, these are the days when things are actually happening this is the uh beginning of the runway so um let's let's take a listen to tim draper for two minutes and he's going to tell us where things are going to go and uh i like this guy's thinking so let's take a listen and we were very excited and we funded a lot of companies and the internet transformed communications and information and gaming and entertainment uh, media um but now we have new technologies and they they start with bitcoin this this um, magic technology that has somehow allowed us to have a trusted global currency yeah. that uh, isn't tied to any political force and it's open, transparent, global, um, frictionless, and and uh, and the technology that built uh, Bitcoin also has other applications. So, for instance, uh, the blockchain. Uh, allows for a perfect ledger. It keeps perfect track of money, or it can also keep perfect track of data. Yeah. And the and a smart contract is a uh, a contract that's built into software, so you don't have to define whether different words mean different things. We all know where the money goes, and so that smart contracts could end up being really a very important part of commerce and business going forward. And then on the other side, we have all this data and data is going is getting more and more important as we can do more and more things with it. Yeah. And as data 
evolves um, and, and people do this um, deep learning on the data, they can create artificial intelligence. They can create an intelligence by making judgment calls based on the data and the smart learning they've, or the deep learning they've done. Well, if you start combining those technologies, they're bigger than the Internet ever was. You have the ability to transform insurance and, well, not just banking and commerce and finance. It's, it's things like insurance and real estate, healthcare, government. All of these things have the potential to be completely transformed. And this is the time. And I feel like those industries are 10 to 100 times bigger and the industries that were affected by the internet. So we're in a big opportunity. So listen to what he's saying. Healthcare, government, finance, real estate. And he didn't say it, but supply chain. So all these different things that he's talking about, this is why I invested into these types of things. So if we just look back at CoinGecko, I'm just going to go over you know, what I hold. I hold Bitcoin because it's the first. And I think it's if it's not going to be an actual currency, because for whatever reason, and it becomes a store of value, so much the better. Great. Ethereum, we can use that for smart contracts. And just like he was talking about, healthcare and real estate and decentral I mean if you're talking about finance decentralized finance I mean ethereum is one of those ones that could be a juggernaut that's why I'm into ethereum and as far as like banking that's why I have xrp because I think that at some point we might want to do cross border payments and this is one of those that could, that could actually happen now is that going to happen I have no idea but that's why I invest in the xrp Bitcoin Cash, I just don't get it. I mean, we have Bitcoin and maybe we can use this for currency, but I just don't, I just didn't see it. Cardano, if Ethereum doesn't work out, I think Cardano is another great one as far as what we're going to talk about as far as smart contracts and some really smart people that have a lot of things going for it and they just launched a mainnet. So I'm all about it. So one of these is going to work out. Bitcoin SV, don't get it. Chainlink, for all the smart contracts that we have, we have to pull in data from outside because blockchain needs those types of information from outside as, as far as like pricing and finance, even like temperatures and uh, weather, information, data, whatever else you have to pull in. Chainlink does all those things with all these different formats or blockchains that are smart contracts. I think smart contracts are what's going to drive uh, one of the next bull runs. Litecoin, don't see it. Binance coin, if I had the opportunity, I'd probably uh, invest into it, but I got my limited spots and Binance is going to be huge. Just don't want to uh, go into it. Crypto.com, sure, maybe. Uh, EOS is another smart contract. That's why I invest into it. Tezos, same thing. Stellar. If XRP doesn't work out, I think Stellar is going to, or I think Stellar is going to be one of the ones that, that could do it. OKB, don't get it. Monero, I mean, if you want to do private transactions, that's just not my thing. So, but I don't know if, if private transactions are going to be that huge. Maybe it will, maybe it won't, but it's not my spe you know, specific thing. And I only invest in things that I think that I would actually use and, and actually are going to be mass uh, for everybody. This could be something for everybody, just not for me. V-Chain, and then we just talked about that, supply chain. I, I, I see that you know, a uh, tremendous type of uh, thing, especially for like, like fraudulent activity of different types of products or produce and things like that. So V-Chain, I can definitely see it. And especially uh, me being in the medical field pr previously, I can tell you that that there is a lot of different things with medications that they need to be tracking a little bit more uh, safely as far as like, like, like recalls and different uh, manufacturer problems. So VeChain, I can definitely see. Tron, I don't get it. US, I mean, I'm not going to keep going, but uh, that's why I invested in all those different ones. And, and that's what I see. So when I, when I want to see about where things are going, I try to look at where smart money is talking about and where things could be. And that makes sense. Now, last thing I want to talk about is Alex Mashinsky, because remember here where we talked about 25 years ago, the U.S. was a leader in making the Internet what, is, what it is today. And the article we talked about telephony and, and telecommunications. Alex Mashinsky here is the CEO of Celsius, and he is the creator of VOIP or voice over Internet protocol. So every type of thing that we that we do as far as like even like, like Zoom, where we have like uh, communications or audio over the Internet, this is the guy that created it and he sees what's going to happen in the future. So let's just take a listen. Basically, in the voicemail business, I had PC based voice systems that processed uh, voice communications and and. I realized, look, playing with the internet back in the early 90s, that, that uh, voice is going to be free. Voice is going to become a, an application on the internet, even though the internet at that time 
was really a, it was all dial up, right? It was oh, the internet yeah, was an application that. on the phone. AOL system. and the ringing, and right? All that stuff exactly. Now. So it, the internet was an application on the voice network, and I said, no, you don't understand. The internet is going to become so huge that the voice network is going to become an application on the internet. Mm -hmm. And and today we're going through the same thing. So you mentioned VoIP to MoIP, the the blockchain and cryptocurrencies are the future of everything, meaning that network is going to be a thousand times bigger and more powerful than the internet because mm -hmm. it requires much, much more processing power. And the largest network always wins. So I know it's going to be very controversial, but I'm saying the same thing happened with the phone network collapsing into the internet. Yeah. The entire internet is going to collapse onto the blockchain because yeah. people think that the blockchain is a feature of the internet, but really the, the blockchain is... Uh, like a black hole, it's just gonna suck. It's like everything. Internet three point It's like Internet three so, yes. and, and we do. It's hear, even bigger than the internet. Yeah. Well, and we hear that a lot. Like this is, but it's hard to imagine <laughs> that that's possible. And how? Like, just like twenty five years ago, it was impossible to imagine right. that this silly idea of uh, a voice of IP is gonna be bigger than the entire phone network. Right. So we 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 always live through that. We underestimate the you know the the impact of technology in five years but you know and and then we'll see how much it impacted our life and it's always much more than we thought so that's why i invested i think that's why you're here watching this video and i think it's a reason why a lot of people are talking about cryptocurrency digital assets right now because they realize that you know it's early um, and this could be and i believe it's going to be uh, bigger than the internet ever was. So uh, we will see. And uh, just talking about Celsius real quick, in the description of every one of my videos, uh, there is a link. It looks like this. And it's going to take you to my exchange of wallets, uh, fees, and uh, different descriptions. And this is all the things that I actually use right now, what I recommend and what I don't recommend. And we go through everything from Coinbase Pro to Gemini, to Abra, Uphold, Simple Swap, Crack, and, and, and for most of you who are uh, not new to the channel, you've already seen this, but for those of you who are just watching initially, this is uh, just something that I put together because there's so much information out there. When I first got in, uh, I thought Coinbase was it, like that was all you could ever use. And uh, you can just take a look at the different fees and compare it to everything else. And uh, you can see why that Coinbase, if you're just new to it, use Coinbase. It's super simple. Um, but if you're and actually, I'm not going to say that. Coinbase is simple, but if you if you download the, the Voyager wallet, it's just as simple and super slick, and there's and it's free for uh, it's like uh, it's it's zero commission free trades, just like Robinhood. So, I mean, that is my one two punch right now. I use the Voyager wallet app uh, to to buy and sell cryptocurrency. Then I transfer it to Celsius because it gives you uh, different yields. I mean, high yields like eight uh, percent. Sometimes between you know six and eight percent. Uh, just for holding your cryptocurrency in their wallet, and I think it's awesome. And that was Alex Mashinsky who was just talking. So uh, up above here, you can you can go right to their websites and you can sign up. That's fine, doesn't matter. But if you use the affiliate links, you know you get twenty five dollars. So you know whatever you want to do. And uh, this leads me to my last point. So we talked about what is going on as far as like twenty five years ago with the internet. And then the, the government, how they kind of got out of the way. They got out of its own way. But now we're going to take a look at what's going on with this current government. And I think the problem is inaction. And Trump, if you if you like him or hate him or love him, what, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. But you have to take a look at where this government is and what their position is. And it's making it a little bit difficult. So Trump views crypto as a threat. And uh, I don't think he's ever talked positively about it. Um, Maybe he has in private. I have no idea. I don't know the man. <laughs> so I don't know what to tell you. But uh, regarding cryptocurrency, uh, it proposes this was a proposal from Trump's new budget plan. And it, it proposed returning the U.S. Secret Service to the, to the the Department of Treasury. This established in 1865. The Federal Law Enforcement Agency was transferred to the Department of Homeland Security in 20, 2002. Trump's budget states... Technological advancements in recent decades, such as crypto and the increasing interconnectedness of the international financial marketplace, have resulted in more complex criminal organizations and revealed stronger link between financial and electronic crimes and the financing of terrorists and rogue state actors. And I think this is why uh, Coinbase has uh, sold an analytics platform to the U.S. Secret Service so they can use it and monitor those types of things. And that's not coming from me. That's coming straight from Coinbase. So, um, yeah. 
and you know, and that's just one part of Trump. Uh, Trump also, you know, tweeted not too long ago. This was on uh, July 11th, which I must say was actually last year. But uh, this is this was his tweets. He says, "I'm not a fan of Bitcoin and other cryptos, which are not money, and whose value is highly volatile and based on thin air. Unregulated crypto assets can facilitate a lot of behavior, including drug trades, other legal activity." And I'm not going to read the rest. So I'm just letting you know that right now the the current government that we have is not too keen on cryptocurrencies and digital assets and i hope uh, that as time moves forward they can understand you know what you know how powerful it can actually be and just realize that hey we have to get regulation in place so so institutional investors can know what the heck is going on so they can actually get in the game and we can all prosper that's all i'm saying all right, let's move on to the next story. So next up, we'll make this quick. Uh, Coin Telegraph says, "Hey, thirty-eight thousand people are watching a fraudulent VeChain YouTube scam right now," which is pretty funny because they. Uh, I mean, it's not funny. There's a scam. It's just funny that they actually put this out and they said, "Hey, there's a scam going on. There's a scam. There's a scam," and they kind of tell you about it, but they don't tell you what to do about it. They just say, "There's a scam. Don't get you know get involved," which I guess is good. Uh, on this channel, we try to like tell you what it is and then go to that scam and then report that scam so you can actually do something about it. But um, I'll give it, I'll tip my hat to Cointelegraph. At least they actually talk about it. You know, some people just bury their head in the sand like, oh, this doesn't exist, which is crazy. Uh, there's way too many scams going on out there. I don't know what the heck is going on, but it seems like there's more and more every day. Anyhow, to sum up this whole article, it says, is this too soon? Checking the wallet address on the VeChain Explorer shows that just three people so far have actually sent funds at time of writing. So just over three, wow, 320,000 bet have been deposited and shockingly no tokens have been returned. That's pretty funny. So, hey, at least people are understanding that, hey, these are actual scams. Hopefully we had a part in that and then other people who have helped out. So uh, great. I hate seeing people getting screwed over out of their money because uh, there's just no reason for that. Anyhow, to finish up, it says, who are these people that keep letting greed overtake their common sense? And perhaps more pertinently, why does YouTube let these scams continue for so long when it regularly shuts down coin telegraph live streams for being harmful content? And that really is the crux of that whole article. Why is YouTube shutting down coin telegraph for harmful content, but leaving crappy different scams up that screw people out of their money left and right? Great question, Coin Telegraph. No idea. So that will leave us to lead us to scam of the day. So that's it for today's video. But if you got a couple minutes, stick with me. Let's go over scam of the day. So scam of the day. Uh, why do we do this? Well, first of all, in the description of every one of my videos, there's going to be a link. It's going to look like this. When we click on that link to scam of the day. It's going to take us this nice little Google spreadsheet. And we started this in January. I did this because I was so sick of people getting screwed out of their money. And I just wanted to educate people to make sure they didn't lose their hard-earned money. I mean, you work hard for your money. It would suck to lose it because you get, you know, scammed by some slick uh, fraudster. Anyhow, we've done a pretty good job. There's just some that are kind of uh, lingering around. So let's see what we got for this. Here's our latest one. And this melon head, it's still up. I can't believe it. So uh, what are we looking for in a scam? Because you don't have to, you can't just take my word for it, right? I'm just some some guy who's who's a YouTuber who likes to talk about cryptocurrency. And uh, just because I say that, you know, this gargantuan headman uh, is, is a scammer doesn't mean anything. Maybe he's just a regular dude and I'm just a hater. So first thing we want to do is we want to take a look at uh, the comment section because you know sometimes the comment section will tell you what's going on. Uh, Droplet said this is a legal asymmetric giveaway. Very true. Not so smart to use your face. This is a scam. Um, but I think there's a, other people say that it's uh, it's not. But maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> Anyhow, so a lot of people say it's a scam. But again, maybe everybody's a hater. So what are we looking for here? What we're looking for is uh, an asymmetrical giveaway. So let's just fast forward this. And what it says here is, hey, to verify your payment address, just send us from 1,000 to 10,000 XRP and you'll get 10,000 to 100,000 XRP back. That sounds good, but that doesn't exist because that's a scam. So, I mean, really, no one, here's the thing. Uh, just remember this. You are not special. No one's giving you money. Uh, no one likes you that much. So just let's just be honest. So if you treat everything like a scam, uh, your life will be a heck of a lot easier. So uh, when you're going about your business and you think, hey, 
Maybe CZ Binance has given is giving away free money. Just send an email to Binance and go, "Hey, I saw CZ Binance giving away free Bitcoin. Is that true?" They'll tell you no. And then if this uh, with XRP, you can go right to their website and go, "Hey, are you guys giving away free XRP?" They'll tell you no. Uh, and, I mean, any place you want to go to, uh, it could be Tesla, it could be Microsoft, it could be anybody that you see in these scams. Just send them an email. It usually takes about 24 hours, and they'll tell you no. So that's the big thing, and that's the easiest way to avoid a scam. So what do we do here? How do we get rid of this nonsense so we're going to downvote and we're going to click on these three dots and we're going to report remember three dots report and what are we doing we're going to say this is ridiculous this is spam we're going to choose one this is scams and fraud we're going to say next and we're going to say hey this is a scam and whatever you try to say be respectful and just say you know be just be matter of fact and that's it so that's all you got to do so we can do that i could i really appreciate it thanks so much this guy's got 2500 views hopefully not too much uh xrp has been lost but hey you never know so that's it for today's video i want to say thanks a lot for sticking with me i really appreciate it and uh that's it if you like these videos there's gonna be a couple more that are gonna uh, pop up on your left and right and uh, i will see you on the next one